Well, hello everybody out there in Tricycle Land. Steve Green, Tricobo, here with you again. And today I thought I would talk to you a little bit about fat trikes. Specifically the one that uh, I, I have here is the uh, Ice Full Fat, which is a pretty incredible machine. Very comfortable, a lot of fun to ride. So I think I'm going to uh, take a little bit of your time here and go over it from front to back and tell you a little bit about it, what I think, what I've done, and uh, then we'll see what you think when you get done. We might uh, find that you want to buy one of these for yourself, or at least uh, uh, a fat tire trike. This is a full-size fat tire trike called the Full Fat, 26 inch wheels all around. They have one uh, a series of fat trikes called the Mini Fat, and they have the fat tires like this, but they're 20 inch wheels instead of 26, so it sits considerably lower to the ground, but it still gives a pretty comfortable ride. And then there's a uh, series called the Micro Fat, it's not really a dedicated fat trike, but it's where people take a, a trike, like for example, the Ice Adventure, and they put like Kinda Flame tires on, three inch tire, you know, larger tires, and kind of make it into a fat trike. So there's several ways you can go. You can modify what you have, or you can get a mini fat or a full fat, which is the big size, like, um, like this. So uh, we'll get into this here and uh, start talking about it. Okay, I'm going to start at the uh, front of the trike and I'm going to work my way back to the rear and just talk about things off the top of my head as we come to them and hopefully I'll remember everything that I would like to say to you. These are the uh, Shimano um, four th P M424 pedals. I originally had a pedal called the Issy pedal, I-S-S-I, that was just this portion here, a mountain bike pedal. But I found that for uh, riding this through sand, it was putting too much pressure against the, uh, my forefoot and causing uh, nerve compression syndrome, hot spots. And so I opted to go to this pedal here, um, which has the uh, platform, it's a Shimano pedal, and uh, it's double-sided, and as you clip in, the way that's built, it uh, rotates there, and it's, it's very comfortable. Let me show you my shoes here. The shoes that I had been wearing um, have been the CDs before I got this trike, and they have a hard plastic sole and no compression is really transmitted into the forefoot. They're great shoes. I highly, I highly recommend these uh, CD Dominator 5 shoes. For this trike, I've gone back to my Lake MX-165 mountain bike shoe. They have a Vibram sole, which is excellent for exploring the backcountry and setting up camp in the backwoods. These are a wider shoe. If you compare the width here, you can see that uh, the uh, lake shoes are more stable if you're really gonna be uh, walking around in the bushes in the backcountry, which is what I plan on doing. Um, but with this uh, Vibram sole, even though it's very thick, it does compress uh, compared to the, it doesn't compress much, but it compresses enough that with those uh, small mountain bike pedals, the Issys that I had on here before, it uh, compresses the forefoot and um, it's not that comfortable. So that's why I've gone to those larger pedals. This is the uh, front chain ring on the ice full fat. It's a single chain ring, 34 teeth. And as you can see here, there is no derailleur on the front of this trike. There's nothing to shift up front, which is quite nice. The reason that is, is because this trike has a roll-off 
uh, speed hub on the back, 14 speeds, an incredibly uh, high gear inch range. And so that's the only thing that needs to be shifted and we'll talk about that in a minute. ICE has these uh, little graduated markings here so that you can set the frame. If you have more than one rider, um, that can be convenient. For me, I set it once and I forget it and I never do it again, so all this, I wouldn't need it. But uh, for multiple riding riders on a trike, you would need it. Right here, this assembly, the headlight that I have, mounts on this. This is an accessory you can get from ICE. Bolts to the front of the derailleur post. These are the V8 VEE -E, tire company and they're called 8s and uh, this is the tire that I put on here after I got rid of uh, my Schwalbe Jumbo Gems which I would definitely not recommend Schwalbe Jumbo Gem tires. They're extremely lightweight and they get flats at the drop of a hat from little tiny thorns and things uh, if you're out in the back country. These V tires are considerably more substantial. Um, the thing with Schwalbe is they make the best tire for cycling, the uh, Marathon Plus. Never had a flat in over six years riding those in all kinds of conditions. Uh, the Schwalbe Jumbo Jim off-road tire, it's good for sand or snow, but that's it. If you're going across the desert, um, I got four flats and 17 miles with those tires. It went flat all around and another one went flat again, so they're pretty worthless. So I'm hoping these V's will do better. I've gone to a tubeless setup in my tires. That's why you see this weird thing here. I haven't really trimmed that off yet, but uh, elsewhere on Trike Asylum I've talked about that's called the ghetto tubeless uh, setup. This trike has front suspension, uh, which is done with an elastomer from ICE. And you can see some really excellent videos that they have put together for how this suspension works. It's very nice. This trike has under seat steering indirect nothing is attached to the kingpins here like in direct steering um, I've had trikes both with direct and indirect and uh, at this point I definitely am a believer in indirect steering where your handlebar pivots at a point here and then there's a tie rod going over to each wheel that turns the wheel. It's uh, much more stable steering and it's actually easier to turn it, especially if you're in some sandy uh, soft area off-road on one of these fat trikes. Okay, um, this chain here, I would like to see ice bring this tube out a little more to about here perhaps because this uh, un this exposed chain here if there's anything on it like lubricant it gets on your pants I suspect they uh, may have it short like that to allow for the chain movement for folks that have the derailleur set up on the front and most people do but for this trike it's a, a compromise because the chain does not move laterally. Um, so eventually I'd like to get a longer piece of tubing up here or down here that would match the one on top. Water bottle holder there. Okay. And here's the ice seat that they went to a few years ago. Very comfortable. Has these, uh, these uh, side supports. They're not really lumbar supports, but they keep you from sliding laterally in the seat if you're um, on some side hill. This seat has a, well, you probably can't see it here very well, but there's a 
piece of uh, neoprene, what a closed cell, I don't know what they call it, in there that uh, makes this actually very comfortable. Um, rear view mirror I put on that side. There's no shifting over on this side at all because the shifting is over here with this single roll-off shifter and you can shift it while the trike is standing still and that's the wonderful thing about an internally geared hub. Now I didn't, I used to think, ah, who needs these things, but I tell you what, if you're going to go out in the back country, an internally geared hub is definitely very worthwhile because we all have been in situations on street trikes where we've misjudged a hill, start getting up the hill and you realize you're in too high of a gear and then you can either turn around and go back down and shift to the proper gear and start over or you can push it on out and blow out your knees to get to the top of the hill. Uh, with this, if you really get in a situation like that, which you do uh, when you're off-road, you simply stop the trike, shift down to a gear that'll get you up the hill, and then go again. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, very easy. There's uh, no derailures front or rear on this trike, and I, I guess I can show you that since we're talking about it. This is the uh, roll-off 14-speed hub. No derailleur. It has a uh, spring-loaded pulley here. Of course, it keeps tension on the chain. Clearance here is quite substantial. Uh, good nine or 10 inches between the ground and the chain here. As if you compare that to a regular 20 inch wheel trike um, with a derailleur, of course, your chain and derailleur uh, will be very close to the ground, especially if you have one of the mini fats with 20 inch wheels instead of 26. You, and if you're in an off road situation, you stand a good chance on a derailleur trike with 20 inch wheels of hitting that. And once you do that, um, you're pretty much out of business. So that's the, that's the roll-off hub, I highly recommend it. Uh, I've heard people say, well, it only has 14 speeds, uh, whereas uh, regular trike has 30. Well, sure, regular trike has 30 speeds, but you don't use the extremes on either end um, because of the uh, uh, crossover on the chain between the front and rear derailleur. So essentially, this has the same number of speeds as a standard. Uh, derailleur system with derailleurs front and rear. Okay, here is a little chain tube on the back. I ship these trikes out and from here back past the rear tire this chain is totally exposed. Well, what happens is if you're in mud, for example, or snow or whatever you're in, this tire drops loads of mud or whatever you're riding through onto this chain right here. And then as the chain moves forward, it goes through your entire system and uh, gets in all your chain tubes. Well, um, since this is a roll-off hub, uh, Patrick over at ICE fashioned me a little chain guard thing here that bolts onto the uh, idler pulley uh, bolt or slides onto it and it holds this chain tube and, and it keeps the chain clean. This works for a roll off because the chain does not move laterally at all like it does on a uh, derail your trike. There are aftermarket solutions for trikes with derailleurs. Hopefully ICE will come up with one so you don't have to uh, spend 25 more bucks at an aftermarket uh, company to get something that really wasn't made for this trike. It's always best when the manufacturer makes it themselves.
Here are the two elastomers. This is what provides the rear suspension. Normally what comes in here is a red one at the top and a yellow one at the bottom, which is softer, ride. Um, yellow is soft, red is medium, and green is hard. I've gone to this setup here. I've taken out the yellow altogether. I put the red, the medium uh, elastomer here, and the green, the hard elastomer here. And this gives it a stiffer ride, which normally you wouldn't want. Um, if you're just riding it around town for kicks and grins or on little day rides on some hills or something, which is what most people actually do. But I plan on using this trike like I've used my other trikes on uh, trips. Um, and when you put panniers on this, the setup that came from the factory was too soft and the rear end of this trike sagged out quite a bit. So with this, it uh, keeps that from happening. So this is a fully suspended model here. This is the ice rack for panniers that comes from the factory. It bolts up here, then it has uh, two more arms that come here, so it's very sturdy. Basically from my fingers down is the ice rack. From here up, this part, I designed it and then took my design to a local welder and he fabricated it. I have a, an Arkell tail rider trunk that I like and it sits right here now. This is just an old Blackburn um, bicycle, standard bicycle rack which ended right here and I had this, had it extended and then I had this 24-inch uh, piece of aluminum here bent and welded on to these arms that bolt on directly to the ice rack. This is the ice rack. Everything above it is what I designed. And so it bolts onto those four places. And then the reason I had this rack extended is because as you know from talking before, my tail rider trunk only comes to about here. The best way to get a trike out of a mess or through some deep stuff um, or just move it around is to grab the back of the trike and then you can pick it up and rotate it. Any other manner of doing it is uh, not too uh, efficient. So that's like a custom made rear rack there. And ICE now makes and includes the fender. So basically I have the rack, the fender, and the rear pull handle all in one unit, which is what I wanted to accomplish. ICE now uh, makes a fender, a rear fender for this tire. It mounts to the swing arm so it moves with the tire so it sits rather close to the tire. It's a very nice fender uh, but it does, ha it has no provision for an upper rack but I mean you could put it on. I could put that fender on here right now uh, and it would move up and down in here um, but it would look kind of goofy at this point with what I have. Okay. This is where on the roll off, two cables come into the little shifter box here. Um, it's not like a derailleur where you have a very powerful spring that when you move the lever the other way to shift, the spring takes it back the other direction. Basically, you have two cables. Let me show you this again up here. There are two cables that come out of this shifting handle. One moves the shifting one direction and one moves it the other direction. So you actually have um, cable movement for shifting in both directions. There's no spring involved. Now you may have noticed this little box here. This trike has uh, uh, 
uh, disc brakes on all three wheels. The front disc brakes are hydraulic. Apparently, from what I understand, they have to go that route if you have the roll-off shifter. So there's, there's fluid in there, and I haven't messed with that yet, <clears throat> but uh, hopefully it's not too much of a hassle. And uh, then there's a, uh, a, a manual, a mechanical disc brake on the rear. Now these roll-off hubs, you have to change the uh, fluid in them every once in a while. And that little, that little screw there comes out and they give you a little measuring thing for doing that. I haven't done it yet, but I've watched the videos on YouTube that show how to do it and it doesn't look like it's too much of a, of a hassle. Right here on the rear rack, my friend uh, Matt Jensen made me this little uh, aluminum piece and the tail light actually sits right there and on this ice rack these little brackets are on both sides and they're just for that kind of thing if you want a tail light on either of both sides you can do that here is the uh, standard ice flag you can put them on both sides if you want there's a little slot in the seat now on the ice neck rest, ice has a neck rest system that is unlike any other as far as I know. <clears throat> this is a suspended neck rest. In other words, you see as I push back on it, it just pushes against air. This kind of neck rest is very comfortable. On my former cat trike and on just about every every trike as far as I know, uh, including custom-made neck rests, uh, they are compression neck rests. They're not suspended, meaning that the back of the cushion material is against a hard piece of metal, and so you only have the compression that's in the material itself, and then you come against metal, steel, aluminum, or whatever. With this, you have the compression that's in the material itself, plus you have, it's not, you're not hitting anything. So in other words, with your neck against this, it's just pushing against air. That's why the ice neck rest, the compression, or the, the um, suspended neck rest is superior to the other neck rest because it's, it's just more comfortable. If you get a trike with a compression neck rest on chip seal, roadway you got to take your head off you got to take your neck off the thing because it's just unbearable but with this you can actually leave your neck on there and uh, do pretty well this trike folds in half and this is the area here where it folds there's a lever right here that pulls out and it's basically you just take off the seat and activate that uh, folding area there and this entire rear wheel assembly rotates 90 degrees and comes forward and the tire and wheel are right here between your front two tires and wheel. It's, uh, it's very compact. Um, this trike, as big as it is, uh, I was able to get it in a friend's Chevrolet Equinox, which is very uh, small SUV. I had to take off the right front tire to do that, so I just took off the right front tire, the seat, folded it in half, and I did not have to remove my rack to do that. The rack touched the left front tire up there but it, it fit just fine. Ice, this ice seat has this zippered area right here that you can put 
all kinds of things like wallets, cell phones, if you use those, um, <clears throat> or whatever you want. It's a little hard to access when you have a neck rest because clearly you have to put your hands around that to, uh, to access it. But it's, an, it's a nice little thing. On the rear here, I have the V tire company, tire called the Bulldozer. It's a four, it's 26 by 4.7 inch tire. The ones on the front are 26 by four inch tires. Uh, very nice tire, has these little uh, areas between the knobs here, have a little traction area in there also. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it, uh, it's, it's quite a, it's a nice tire. I haven't actually taken it off road yet because um, I've been involved in another uh, project, but uh, I hope to have that uh, tested out in the near future. ICE uses the Alex rims for the trike. This is called the uh, Blazerk. Now these rims have these cutouts all around it. And if you push on it, you can see, okay, it depresses. That is not like a tube or anything. A uh, person that wouldn't, hasn't had any experience with this thinks, wow, that must be the inner tube. No, it's not. That's a tire liner, a, a very thick material tire liner that goes around in there. And uh, <clears throat> the only reason I can figure they do these cutouts is to save a little bit of weight. Um, I don't know, I, I would probably be just as happy with a, with a solid rim. But uh, the reason I went to the ghetto uh, tubeless setup on this trike is because this rim has a seam that does not hold air and obviously um, these would allow air to escape too. So basically the reason this, uh, this piece here, this is a tube that I cut lengthwise down the center and it actually forms the seal against the tire and there, there are no tubes in these tires. Inside the tires are the stands, no tube, tire sealant and if you've watched the demonstration videos it's supposed to be pretty pretty great stuff. Um, of course they say that every few months you have to refresh it. I don't know quite yet what that means. We will see. Uh, you, you don't get flats apparently even if you run over nails uh, repeatedly, but uh, it might, I don't know, it might be more hassle than it's worth, we'll see. I have, my friend Matt has a, a fat bike and he uses the stands, uh, no tubes, and he hasn't had a flat yet and he's got a, probably about 6,000 miles on it by now. So there you kind of have it. It's a really nice trike and I find these uh, fat trikes, well this is the only one I have experience with, but I will say that hands down it's the most comfortable riding trike I could possibly imagine. Suspension on all three wheels um, and with these fat tires uh, they're like kind of like riding on a baby buggy. The, the tires themselves are 20 PSI max, maximum tires. Um, I've been running like 13 pounds in them, 13 to 15, and it's pretty soft. Some guys run down between five and eight pounds. Um, the softer you go, the softer the ride, and you get a little bit more traction because your footprint area may expand there. Um, but of course, the uh, softer you go, the harder it is to pedal through cer certain types of areas. So it's just kind of a personal preference on that. But these trikes are extremely comfortable. I would uh, use this trike on a cross-country road tour uh, uh, without thinking twice about it. I have all the bags, can load up all the stuff I've always taken. 
Now the 700 was uh, really great, the Catrack 700 for touring when I did the Oregon coast because you're reclined at 25 degrees and uh, boy it's ultra comfortable until you hit chip seal or something like that and I had Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires on but even with those when you hit chip seal you got to take your your neck off that compression neck rest that Cat Trike still uses um, which people have complained about for years um, but as long as you're on nice smooth pavement that 700 was great well that's not the way it is in real life and uh, so this trike is comfortable no matter where you go. Now the seat angle on this trike is certainly not any 25 degrees and you can move this seat back considerably more, not back, but at a, a greater recline angle than what I have here. I had to opt for this angle because as you can see, any farther back it would interfere with this fender rack situation I made here. One other thing I did is this piece here that straps to the seat holds a bracket that holds the seat to the upright support. Well, ice makes it really long and it comes back to about here normally and what it does is it doesn't actually hit the rack but it comes very close to their rack to their own rack now I didn't make this rack they did and th but then when you go to take the seat off or if you go to move the seat or do anything with the seat you end up having to um, totally loosen it up at the front too because you can't actually get the seat out of there you can't lift up because it's trapped because of the length of these arms so I had these arms um, cut off here so I cut off about this much aluminum and they just had different notches for people like want to run this seat up at a really straight angle well I don't like my seats at straight angles I like them back they're more comfortable you don't uh, suffer from recumbent butt because there's not all that pressure on your butt so now I have this uh, attachment unit here that's just long enough for what I need and there's tons of room here now I can put my hand in between there um, and uh, so I can move it, do whatever I want with the seat with no problems at all okay and one person asked well why do I have so much room here why did I design in all this room between the tire and the fender well the reason for that is because this tire is on a swinging arm and it as you go over bumps the tire moves up and down and if you had a fender see the fender is attached to the rack and the rack is attached to the trike itself the frame and the rack does not move but the tire does move and the tire goes up and down so if you have a fender attached to the rack which is fixed then it has to be have a lot of clearance here to allow the tire because the tire can move up you know like to uh, I can hear uh, at times especially when you get a load on this trike the tire will the, the trike will settle now with the ice fender it attaches to the swing arm assembly itself and so it moves with the tire and that's why the ice fender is really close to the tire okay I'm uh, a little over six feet tall and I'm sitting here on the seat and you can see my leg my knee is right here and my leg bends and the frame is right there if you're a short person compared to me in height let's say you're five feet tall you might want to get one of the 20 inch mini fats rather than a 26 inch full fat uh, fat trike because <laughs> actually it, it if I were much shorter I my feet wouldn't uh, really be hitting the ground if you look here you can see this trike has a lot of uh, ground clearance here it actually has more than most SUVs I think okay folks 
I think that's about it uh, for today, talking about the uh, ice full fat. So if you get a chance, I would recommend riding a fat trike. They're definitely a lot of fun, and they are not something you can only ride on dirt roads and snow and sand washes. Uh, uh, they're fun riding on the street and you're definitely going to be smiling because they're comfortable. And if you want to go down a dirt road or if you want to go over a curb, hey, with these trikes you can do it. Uh, that's, that's the beauty of it. You can, you can see a dirt road going off into the hills and, and just get on it and go. And these trikes will take you there. Now I will say that I had an original idea that I was going to ride this across the Mojave Desert. If you followed my writings, you know that that didn't happen because of extreme uh, flooding this past October and the roads were literally destroyed. I mean, you couldn't do anything but even walk across them barely. So I didn't do that. <clears throat> but I did learn that when you load this trike down for a two week backcountry trek, um, it's, it's a one wheel drive and even with the, the fat tire, it's tough. I rode this through some deep sand in the Mojave Desert, unloaded, and it was a lot of work. I was getting through it with my roll off in low gear, but I was putting a lot of pressure against my feet and that's why I changed out these pedals to the larger pedals. But, uh, as far as riding through deep sand in really tough conditions, I would say that these fat trikes are good if they're unloaded and you're just on a day thing having a blast. But if you actually want to take a backcountry trip, hey, it would be best to stick to dirt roads or dirt trails as much as possible. That's something that's a little firmer. Uh, and you definitely want that pull handle on the back of your rack like I showed you because I've had to use it once. If the trike is, uh, if you get into sand or something so deep you can't literally have the traction to pedal out of, regardless of your tire pressure, you're gonna have to turn the trike around and pull it from the rear. I mean, that's, that's how you get these trikes out of messes. So, um, that little caveat, uh, keep your back road trips on uh, fairly hard pack if you can. Okay, I will say that's, that's about it for today, I'm signing off, and uh, as I'm talking here, I, I'm wearing the uh, Jaw Yo uh, Add Fuel to Life shirt from Matt Gallup. Matt, uh, today as I'm talking, is either at, well, he's at the Everest Base Camp, and it won't be long before he will be summiting Mount Everest. That's his plan, and then he will continue on with his HP Velotechnic Scorpion uh, on his uh, World Tricycle Tour. So I thought wearing the uh, Jaw Yellow shirt today would be appropriate in honor of Matt who's up there at uh, base camp freezing right now. <laughs> okay, everybody, you have a, a good day and we'll talk at you later. See ya.